guys, welcome to What is Healthy? The show where my kids and I uh, show off some of our favorite family recipes with a surprisingly ve veggie forward twist. And this one's really special uh, because we just had our holiday meal and we're going to show off one of our favorite... Happy Thanksgiving, everybody! <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Belated. We're going to show off one of our favorite Thanksgiving leftover meals, a really creative way to, to use up a whole bunch of them. Um, and of course, we're going to feature a very special star vegetable. What do we got? Spaghetti squash. <laughs> Spaghetti squash. We love this, and we actually do have it as part of our regular Thanksgiving. Um, but I know that's not typical for everybody, so I did want to show it. It looks like a big yellow football. And it's a really cool squash because it kind of is halfway between a summer and winter squash. It grows like a winter squash. It's in season like a winter squash. It looks like one. And as I cut it in half, you'll see it looks like a winter squash on the inside too. However, when you cook it up, and you, you kind of cook it like a, um, a winter squash too, but once it's cooked, it actually takes on a lot more of a summer squash kind of texture and, and personality and flavor. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot juicier. Uh, it doesn't have that kind of starchy, overly sweet thing going. How about right now you scrape out these seeds? Yeah, I'm just kidding. All right. And now when you're doing this, here, you know what? I'll hold it to make it easier for you. Here you go. Scrape down. Okay. Yeah, I just a little short. <laughs> I don't know. Here, do you, well, here we go. Is that better? Yeah. All right. I haven't got my birth spurt yet, people. <laughs> <laughs> do I handle Lila? No. No? Okay. We're going to dress this and cook it up. The easiest way to do it, honestly, is in the microwave. The microwave is really easy and really tasty. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, do you want to come dress this up? Yeah. Go ahead and dress it with a little olive oil. All right, and then we're just going to cover this up with some plastic wrap. Microwave time! We're going to poke a few holes Microwave. to vent. And now it is microwave time. We're gonna pop it in. Um, and for a side about this big, obviously all microwaves depend, but probably about eight minutes. All right, in eight minutes, that'll be ready. The Pischetti. The Pischetti squash is all done, um, but it is still really, really hot. So we're leaving it in the microwave to give it time to cool. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and start on our croquette filling, which is really easy because we are using all Thanksgiving leftovers for it. Like turkey. Like turkey. You can't have turkey croquettes without turkey. So go ahead and put in the turkey. You can use dark meat, light meat, whatever works for you. Error. And, all right, go ahead. And now Delilah, you can get your hands in and just shred it all up. I'll help. You can certainly use a knife if you want to blitz it in a food processor. You can do that too. Um, but this is fast and easy and sometimes it's fun to be messy. Turkey is all shredded up so now we're going to add our filler leftovers. And that's really whatever you guys have. So mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, mac and cheese, stuffing. If you're a Hispanic house, you probably have some arroz con mambules. Whatever of that that you like, that's what you can put in. We've got two today. We're going to do a mix of our mashed cauliflower, because we don't do mashed potatoes. Uh, so that's going to go in. And... Thank you for that endorsement. You're go welcome. ahead, put in as much as you like. And then we're also going to put in just some regular bread stuff in here too. All right, and then after she's done putting in the cauliflower, 
She's gonna grab the bread stuffing. And then the other thing that you can add are whatever your veggie sides are. So maybe that's just some cream corn or some spinach casserole. Maybe it's a scoop of um, your, what is it? <laughs> Green bean casserole. Um, for us, we always have sauteed spinach. So that's what we're putting in. And then the last thing you want to do, since we have so many dry ingredients, just a little bit. Go ahead, a little bit. There you go, that looks great. That looks great. All right, and then we're going to stir all that up. Go Yay! ahead. Yay! You stir. And just mix it really well. We're going to form the croquettes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. And you can form them into whatever shapes you like. You can do balls. You could do patties. You could do the traditional kind of croquette cone shape. You don't want them too big because we still have to do the spaghetti squash. So probably like about a meatball-ish. What are we shape are we doing? We're doing? Huh? You're doing the balls? I want to do cones. You want to do cones? Okay. You do cones. I'll do balls. And we're just going to put in here. Okay. They don't have to be perfect. We do need to keep the food in the bowl, please. I want to pick the shapes. I'm going to do some patties too. Why not? We're just going to have fun with it. I'm going to make it a heart. A heart? <laughs> a heart croquette? Okay. That sounds a little tricky. Oh, that's pretty cute. Okay, see, without any kind of measuring, we got about a dozen and a half. That sounds like a pretty good number. And now we're going to go put these in the freezer just for about like 15 minutes, uh, just to give them time to firm up so that we can uh, wrap them in our spaghetti squash. Our spaghetti squash is out of the microwave, but it's still pretty warm, but it is cool enough to work with. And look what happened when it cooks. You can kind of see it already. It gets these really long kind of fibers that hold their own individual shape. And that's why it's called spaghetti squash. And if you haven't tried this vegetable, definitely do. You can use it all kinds of ways. I think most people actually just use it as a spaghetti substitute. I certainly do that a lot right now with the gestational diabetes, uh, because again, it's nutritionally more similar to a, a summer squash. It's not as starchy and sugary as a winter squash, so I can um, eat it safely. Um, so you can do it with like a red sauce or an Alfredo sauce, but I like it just on its own a little salt and pepper and balsamic vinegar. And uh, what we do when we make it for the holidays is we just dress it with butter and cheese and, and herbs. So do you wanna, uh, you wanna start flaking it for me? I'm gonna show everybody how it's done. Here, how about I hold it and you can flake it right into the dish. So I think we are done. All right, and now uh, to season this up, we're gonna add butter. Add a little less than half. Yeah, about there, that looks great. And when I'm supposed to cut it. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. Not funny. There You're we go. Funny. All right. Add the, oh my God, no! <laughs> that is actually a spice blend that we just keep in the house. It's a mix of garlic, it's onion, oregano, oregano parsley, it's and It's oregano. Go ahead and put it in. Let's calm down the sauce just a little bit, okay? Okay. Thank you, miss. Calm down. Calm, on the, calm down the sauce. Turn on the funny. That sounds like a better plan because you are a very funny kid. All right, that looks good. You can add the shaky cheese, and you can probably add the rest, because that, that jar is pretty low. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Salt and pepper. Just a little. Go ahead. Oh, beautiful sprinkling. Nice and high, so it spreads around. All right, I'm gonna start mixing this. The paper. And the pepper. And the 
They're called the peeper. The peeper? Yes. <laughs> What's the peeping? Uh, and then you'll be back. <laughs> okay. I meant that to be funny, Mom. I know. All right. Now, fortunately, we do. I just wanted to show you how to make it since I know spaghetti squash is not a normal part of every Thanksgiving repertoire. Um, but you can see it's super simple to make, very low maintenance. Uh, we have some already made. So we're going to use this and get started. Uh, the croquettes should have had enough time to set. So we'll show you how we finish them up in just a second. We are ready to assemble. We have all of our components. And this is really the only cooking we're doing. Because up until now, all we have done is mix leftovers right out of our fridge. So we've got our croquettes that have had time to solidify and um, harden. set, harden. We've got our spaghetti squash that is ready to go. And then we have just your tri typical triple dredging station. Some flour just seasoned with some salt and pepper, garlic and onion powder. Eggs with a little bit of water added to thin the wash. And then over here we... We have, and today we're using panko. And that's it. So to show you how to put them together, the lovely Delilah is going to get to work. So step one is not the croquettes. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to make a patty um, of spaghetti squash onto our hands. Okay, and then plop that croquette right in the middle. Patty now kind of, yep, cup it and bring it up the sides. You're right, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you just do a little bit on the top. Give it a little roll around, make sure we've covered everything really well. It is. You can see now why we made the original croquettes so small, because they get big. All right, roll it in the flour. Make sure you cover it everywhere. Gentle, gentle. They are still pretty soft, because they're not frozen. We just froze them enough to, cooled them enough to set. Yep, and then into the egg wash. Careful, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, and then we're going to wrap them in the breadcrumb. Get them really well coated. What, so you can barely see any of the egg and stuff. Right, we want it just a lovely ball of breadcrumb. We have a few already made, so she's going to keep working. But I'm going to go ahead and put these um, into the skillet that has been um, warming up this whole time. So let's go. This is uh, canola oil, but you can use whatever neutral cooking oil you like, peanut oil, coconut oil, um, just something with a high burning temperature because we're frying these up at a pretty good temperature, like a medium high. And we're going to just very carefully put them in. There we go. They're not bubbling quite as much as I wanted, so I'm going to turn up the heat. You want it good and hot so that it doesn't soak up too much oil. All right, putting these in. And then you can cook these, you can fry, I mean, they're croquettes, so you're gonna fry them up, but you can fry them the way you choose. I like pan frying because it's really easy. And remember, all of this stuff is already cooked, so we don't actually have to worry about cooking it. We just need the inside to get warm and the outside to get crispy. But if you prefer deep frying or even air frying, uh, those are perfectly fine as well. So those are gonna just sit there for a few minutes until they start to brown. These are nice and golden underneath. So we're gonna very carefully flip these over. You know what? I actually think I'm a Tommy's girl. I think for the heart guy, I think we're gonna need more eggies. Okay. I think for the sure, honey. I think for the heart, we're gonna have to have to spatulate. Okay. Uh-oh. Maybe putting it in the middle wasn't the best idea. Oh, look at that! Ooh, that one's super crispy. All right, so just a few more minutes to finish cooking on all sides, and they're going to come out of the stove. All right, these look pretty golden, so it is time to take them out. Put them into our draining rack. If you don't have one, you can just use a paper towel. 
And that'll be fine. Uh, I think we're gonna just go ahead and put these on and go get these set up. So that they, oh no, one's down. I'll get it. Get them so that they can drain. Whoa. There we go. Her funny little hard croquette. All right, we're going to sprinkle these with some salt. Oops. Give them just a quick minute to cool, and uh, it'll be done neat. So here we are. We have our finished turkey croquettes. And honestly, two of these, maybe three if you're really hungry, really is a meal by itself because it's already got turkey and stuffing and mashed cauliflower in our case, or mashed potatoes and veggies. Uh, but if you did want to dress it up, because this definitely doesn't look like a complete meal, you could serve them on top of your mashed potatoes, like it's traditionally done with croquettes or a side of buttered noodles. Um, I would probably just do like a nice little light salad, maybe top it off with some gravy or cranberry sauce like you do on Thanksgiving. Go for it. You're all ready. <laughs> well, oh, ready to go. it's so good. <laughs> what do you think? It definitely reminds me of a crab cake. Yeah, it's I, more than a traditional croquette. I think it's like it has because of the turkey in there. Mm -hmm. It has um, that like meatiness. The like crab cake is so good. It is really good, and the spaghetti squash comes out like really creamy. Holy goodness, you came up with this? I did. I <laughs> came up with this. Baby, come taste it. Zach mm -hmm. is gonna love this because he loves um, spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that's good. What's the creaminess of the spaghetti squash? That's, that's just the spaghetti squash with a lot of butter and parmesan You're the best cheese. Baby. Baby. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Baby. It is very good. It reminds me kind of like a crappy. There's spaghetti squash in it. Yeah, yeah she told me. Here, come on. I saved you the big one. You got like the oh, hamburger right. sized <laughs> one. Ah. <laughs> that's when you take both of them and run away. Okay, guys, right. I hope you liked watching For us sure. make this, uh, this recipe. I hope you try it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please hit like, and if you want to see more, subscribe, hit the notification, share with your friends. I would like to subscribe. You would like to Excellent. <laughs> All right. Like thank you. it. What? Like it. Like it. All right. Thank you. You want to help me wave bye-bye? Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs>